My name is Paul Minter, and this is my path to math. I studied geometric analysis and geometric measure theory. So these are these are two disciplines which are quite closely related, but also ask quite different questions. But the general idea is we're interested in understanding geometric shapes or geometric objects, which uh, say appear in nature. And so typical examples of this are soap bubbles. And so a soap bubble tries to form the shape which has the minimal surface area. And if you have two bubbles and they join, then you have what's called a double bubble. And they form this different shape where you have actually three different sort of bubble interfaces. And the shape is governed by this sort of minimization procedure. I don't think I came to math in any sort of direct manner. I was sort of just very confused about the world and how things worked. And so I went to school and I asked my teachers, can I just take one of the textbooks from school? Can I just take them home? And that's how I learned most of sort of my GCSEs and studying sort of more independently at home. Growing up in a small seaside town, the, my impression was, was that the purpose of school was to learn things, to get ba the basic qualifications, to get a, a job in the local town. I was actually discouraged from applying to Cambridge. No one went to Cambridge or Oxford or these sort of elite, higher sort of elite institutions. And so I think people were just trying to keep me like, don't get your expectations too high. And when I got the letter accepting to Cambridge, it was, it was surreal. I mean, ultimately, I ended up specializing in more pure mathematics for my uh, BA in, in math. And then uh, once I finished my master's, I continued in Cambridge. I pursued my PhD. Studying in Cambridge was was hard, definitely. There was lots, you had to put a lot of work in, a lot of independent study. It was very fortunate in some sense that I already had this very independent mindset and I was happy to go learn things and spend hours staring at a piece of paper, trying to work things out, which maybe some other people didn't have initially. They'd had a lot more support growing up and in school. At IES, the faculty member I've had most interaction with has been Camillo Delelis, who's a professor in the School of Math here. And Camilo has been extremely welcoming, extremely friendly, extremely nice. He's, um, he's always happy to talk about math or anything else. We are working on understanding the sort of finer geometric structure of these area minimizing surfaces. And we were able to show that actually the, the singularities aren't completely arbitrary. They do have some geometric structure to them, which is perhaps what you'd expect because these objects are sort of natural geometrically. For me, the most meaningful part of my my time at the IES has just been interacting with all the people here, whether it's the postdoctoral students or other people at the Institute. Since coming to, to Princeton and the IES, my world has sort of exploded in terms of knowing people in interaction. Growing up with siblings that have special needs it helped you view the world in a different way. I learned to become more aware of other people, how their needs might be different to others, just to always sort of stay open-minded, stay calm, and just try to support people the best, best you can. My, my advice to someone interested in pursuing math is just follow what you're interested in. Math is extremely broad. Some things you will find interesting, some things you will not find as interesting. That's completely fine. You definitely need to make mistakes to learn. This is true for anything. If there's anything, this is just true for math. It's true for, I think, lots of different aspects of life. That's how you become you.